great. Good morning, church. It is good to see you all here this morning. It is good to be here this morning. And I hope that this celebration, this um, worship service is a joyful part of your Sabbath celebration today. A few announcements before we start the service. Next week, summer officially begins at church next week. So, oh, yay! So what time are y'all going to come to church next week? 9.30. If you come at 11 o'clock, what's going to happen? Nothing. <laughs> You'll even be probably too late for coffee and cookies. So 9.30 tomorrow morning, that schedule runs, or 9.30 next Sunday, that schedule runs all the way through and including Labor Day. So just mark that on your on your calendars and the other special treat um, next week Sarah Branham will be preaching and leading worship make note that next week our Sunday televised service will be broadcast at 6 30 so find that record button on your television if that's how you've been watching service we we actually have people that watch it on television and then come and experience the live thing and they compare yeah so but next week we're at 6 30. the following week on june 5th there is no televised service we're being bumped by i think we're being bumped next week because of soccer and i think the following week i think it's baseball or something like that so just make sure you'll see those notes. Um, and that comes out in the newsletter as well. There is still time to sign up for the one day all church retreat that's gonna be taking place here on June 11th. That sign up sheet is out on the, um, uh, there's a table out in the narthex. Yes, Janet? Okay. Okay. Today is the last day of Sunday school for this year. Oh, and that means that there's a party. Yay! Okay. Um, and then also today, just a reminder that we're going to be having a potato bar reception in Fellowship Hall after the service as a, a way to celebrate my sabbatical beginning and to welcome Sarah in as your sabbatical minister. Are there any other announcements that need to be made today? Janet. Okay. Nursery care is going to be provided throughout the summer. So whether it's a UCC-led service or Christ United Methodist-led service, there will still be nursery care, except for Memorial Day, Fourth of July weekend, and Labor Day. So any of those weekends that are that are not attached to a holiday, our nursery attendant Whitney will be um, in the nursery. The nursery will be available on those holidays, it just will not be staffed. So if you have kids that will be using the nursery on those Sundays, um, we're asked that you remain with them for supervision. Don't. And the playground is coming back. So beginning next week, we'll have the playground set up. That's a little table over here um, underneath the Christmas banner. 
and Janet will keep that supplied with quiet activities for, for children that do not go into the nursery and might need a little bit of help making it through the service. We do ask for the playground that the adults that are attached to the children that are going to be sitting over there, that they sit over there kind of by them just to kind of help do some supervision because the, the playground itself is not supervised. Janet, do you have any other announcements? Okay, that's good. Anybody else? Okay. So let's take some time and settle into this day's opportunity for worship. Let it be a celebration of God's presence in our lives, in our homes, in our church, and in our world. Let it be a time to rejoice in God's love, grace, and peace. Let it be a time to be open to God's Holy Spirit moving in and around and through us. Welcome to worship. Tyler. Good morning and welcome. Good morning. I invite you to stand as you're able and join me in the call to worship. In the beginning, before time, before people, before the world began, God was here and now among us, beside us, enlisting the people of earth for the purposes of heaven. God is. In the future, when we have turned to dust and all we know has found its fulfillment, God will be. Not denying the world, but delighting in it. Not condemning the world, but redeeming it through Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. God was. God is. God will be. I invite you to join me in the spirit in the spirit of prayer with very journey we arrive at this resting place O oh god and here we have opened the doors of praise the windows of wonder and the deep well of sustenance that feeds the souls this is a gift not to some but to all who enter we make plans for life yet we do not always know what will happen along the way we think we know 
what we want in life, yet we do not always know what we will truly need. We believe we have things all figured out, and yet our journeys still surprise and astound us. So open us, open us, open us to the way. You fill us with what we need. Open us to the sustenance, I'm sorry, to the abundance of grace that surrounds us. Open us to, the abiding to your abiding love revealed in the beauty of creation. Open us to you, our God, our creator, revealed in the life, teachings, and resurrection of our Savior, Jesus. Please remain standing and uh, let's join together in singing our first hymn, number four in the Black New Century Hymnal. forward and when you do don't don't sit down because this is going to be kind of a, a moving around kind of thing and you're going to have some company up here so since it's the last day of Sunday school and y'all are going to have a party right you ready for that party okay if anybody just really does not want to go to the party you can always stay here and worship okay you know just to give you that out so is there anybody that's just going to stay up here and worship Janet, you've got them all. Oh, Harper's going to stay here. Okay, but the other thing that we do when it's the last day of Sunday school is we say thank you to some people. Who should we say thank you to today? Thank you to God. Well, we always say thank you to God. But somebody, some of the people here in this room, turn around. Thank you to you. Go well, thank you. But the ones that we're going to be saying thank you to are your teachers. The people who have been teaching you Sunday school this year. So I'm going to call out their names and I'm going to invite them to come forward and maybe stand right here behind you, okay? So these, these are not in order of any preference other than the way the alphabet came together. So Aaron Borland. Um, Aaron Booker is not able to be with us today. Linda Grossman is not able to be with us today. Dean Jardy is here. 
Janet Kustra. <laughs> There's more. There's more. Liz Lee is not able to be with us today. We'll also share in um, our joys and concerns time. Liz's mother passed away on Friday, so we're going to keep her in our thoughts and prayers too. Betsy Rogstad is out of town. June Rivero is out of town. Carol Shipley, Sue Turton, and Gwen Valley is out of town. But Julian is going to be standing in for Grandma. All right, all right. So I, I want to point out something to you all. I don't know if you had figured this out, but um, these are not the very first Sunday school teachers ever. Do you realize that there are people that have taught Sunday school before these people taught Sunday school? Is Janet one of the first ones? Maybe, maybe. And so I wanted to I, I wanted to point out that these Sunday school teachers are part of a long chain of people who have taught Sunday school over the years. So I'm going to say, and, and kids, you might want to turn around and watch this. If you have ever taught Sunday school, either in this church or any other church, stand up. That is pretty impressive. So you can all, you can be seated. You all have to stay up here. What's that? And did any of you ever have a Sunday school teacher before you taught Sunday school? Yeah, yeah. So we, yeah. <laughs> So this whole Sunday school thing is, is this great ongoing celebration and way to learn about, and here's your cue. Who do we learn about in Sunday school and church? God, Jesus. Yep, God and Jesus. Yep. And the Holy Spirit. And we slip that Holy Spirit in there every once in a while. And angels. So. And a good Friday. Now this is where you all come in. Actually, there's going to be two parts where you all come in. How many times has somebody asked you, or do you remember if there's any time that somebody has asked you, what do you want to be when you grow up? A lot of times. A lot of times. So one thing, what do you want to be when you grow up? Astronaut. Astronaut. Military engineer. Military what? Engineer. Engineer. I'm in between science and teacher. Science and teacher. An astronaut, two astronauts in one family. All right, Mom. Yeah. Did you know that you can be an astronaut, a military engineer, science and teacher, and be a Sunday school teacher all at the same time? Oh. You can just do that online, but isn't it much more fun when you can do it all together in one room? So think about that. So now that you know that all of these really cool people have been Sunday school teachers, and all of those really cool people have been Sunday school teachers, so I'm getting a thread, you know, being a Sunday school teacher is a cool thing. No matter what you do in life, you can be a Sunday school teacher too. Even at this church. Yeah! Okay, so that's, that's one thing for you. The other thing that that um, gets to happen at the end of the year if you're a Sunday school teacher, your congregation gets to say thank you. So I need you to help me say thank you to these Sunday school teachers, okay? So come up here with me. And would, do you know who, let's see, do you know who Sue is? Sue, raise your hand. Give that to Sue. You'll be giving that to Janet, okay. And Carol, raise your hand. Would you take this to the lady that has her hand raised right over there in the black jacket? Let's see, we're gonna save this one. And this one, you get to take Gwen's. Don't go away, because I might give you another one. Oh, and do you know who Dean is? He's the only guy standing up here. So right over there on the end. And 
Billy, do you want to give this to your mom? There you go. And, uh-oh, I think we'd, we needed an extra one. <gasps> we didn't get one for you to give. Tell you what, you're just going to hold this one for Linda. Can you do that? Okay, don't take it home with you, though. Okay, let's come back out here. And we're going to say a prayer to thank these Sunday school teachers and thank all of those Sunday school teachers and all of the Sunday school teachers that we've had. And then everybody will sit down except for Sue. Okay. So let's pray. Dear God, thank you for Sunday school teachers. For the crafts they teach, the stories they tell, the stories they listen to, and the love they share. Maybe someday we'll be Sunday school teachers too. Amen. Okay. Kids, why don't I have you just go ahead and have a seat right here. Teachers, you can go ahead and have a seat. Thank you. And do you want to go ahead? Oh, here, look. I have this. Yes, you do need a microphone. Because if anybody's using a hearing assist device, they can't hear you. Okay. There. <laughs> Janet, would you please come up here? You are the best coordinator a board could ever ask for. And you do so much for all the children in our church. There isn't a child that doesn't just love you to death, even if you've been here forever. <laughs> anyway, our board wanted to honor you. And there's some flowers, and in here is a gift. So thank you for all that you do for us. We can. <laughs> Thank you, Janet. Are you all ready for a party? Yeah. Okay, let's send them out with a song.
Multimedia, I thought I was just going to listen to the tape version. <laughs> so I might stumble. <laughs> Thank you. Fortunately, I'm reading Peter, so that should be easy. Our re readings today begin with the text from the First Testament, often called the Old Testament, the book of Joshua. At this point, <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry, <laughs> not reading from Peter, I'm Peter. <laughs> <laughs> um, from the book of Joshua. At this point in the story of our ancestors in faith are well into the land that God had promised them and, they're, and they were growing and settling into that land. They were a force to be reckoned with. They were secure. They were living the dream. And Joshua's response was to frequently send them back to their tents to remember who they were, whose they were, and from where they had come. Let us listen to one of these accounts as it has been kept for us in the book of Joshua, chapter 22, verses 1 through 6. Then Joshua summoned the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh and said to them, you have observed all that Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you and have obeyed me in all that I have com commanded you. You have not forsaken your kindred these many days down to this day, but I have been careful to keep the charge of the Lord your God. And now the Lord your God has given rest to your kindred as he promised them. Therefore turn and go, go to your tents in the land where the possession lies, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you on the other side of the Jordan. Take care to observe the commandment and instruction that Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you to love, the, love your Lord, to walk in all God's ways, to keep God's commandments, and to hold fast to God, and to serve God with all your heart and with all your soul. So Joshua blessed them and sent them away and then went to their tents. The Gospel reading for day, today contains a short conversation Jesus has with a lawyer. It's often tied into the telling of what has become known as the parable of the Good Samaritan. Let us listen to a reading from the Gospel according to Luke chapter 10 verses 25 through 27. A lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to, in, to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, with all your strength, 
and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. These are the readings for today. May God bless all that we have heard, whether it be in the words spoken or the message that the Holy Spirit has carried to us as we listen. Thank you, Peter. You're welcome to stay up here. You're done for the day. You can go sit down there or you can stay up here, wherever you're most comfortable. These are really comfortable chairs, by the way. So. Yeah, it's a, it's a great view. We had a, one of my favorite stories to tell was one time at a, a congregational meeting, and this was a church that was a little bit more high church than here. Um, we had acolytes that would dress in the little white robes, and they would come and sit up in the front the, through the whole service and carry the Bible over for the lay reader to read and all of that kind of stuff. And, and one time at one of these annual meetings, um, somebody raised their hand and, and said, you know, we, we need to talk about the behavior of the acolytes while they're sitting up there. You know, they're squirreling around and doing all kinds of stuff. And I love the minister's response. He said, you should see what we see from up here. <laughs> My um, countdown thing now says that I have 29 minutes before sabbatical begins. So I better get a hurry on here. So those are Israelites. They had made it. The days and the place and the time and status and freedom for peace that they had so long was just right there. It was, it was right before them. Their countdown calendar was, was almost done. Before this, they had known slavery oppression, hunger, displacement, wilderness, fear, unexpected challenges that they had no way of knowing how or even if they would overcome them. They needed a sabbatical. They had known great leaders and they had known scoundrels. They had conquered and prevailed. And Joshua had brought them into the promised land and led them into it in a way that they knew, that they just knew it was home. God's love had been let loose upon them, and they, in turn, were let loose upon the world. And we have to remember that theirs is not an entirely pretty history and would certainly have been told very differently by those who had inhabited that land before them. The story of our ancestors in faith, like so many stories, as it is kept and told, is a clear example of the history being told through the eyes of the winners. So with the acknowledgement that land grabs and conquests and invasions are as old as time itself, we turn to our faith history to walk around in it a little bit with humility and curiosity in hopes that we can still learn from the past as we lean into the guiding of the Holy Spirit to create the future before us. Today I am drawn to threads that link today's First Testament and Gospel readings together. As the Hebrew people of old are about to be let loose into the next phase of their history as a people, Joshua, their leader, instructs them and blesses them. Joshua, the one who had led them from the wilderness into the Promised Land, calls them together and reminds them from where they had come and what their guiding principles should be. And likewise, Jesus counsels his early followers and reminds them of what their core should be, what should be at the center of all they do and all they are. In doing so, Jesus calls forth the centrality of the commandments. God and their love of God. That's where it is. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your mind, and with all your soul, and with all your strength, and your neighbors as yourself. 
Then he goes on to tell that parable that we know as the Good Samaritan. We're not going to go down that path right now. We're going to stop right there. But the reminder of these two big commandments, love the Lord your God with everything that you have and love your neighbor. For Joshua, it's a time to bring them back to earth, so to speak, to remind them of their journey and their center and their grounding. He says, take good care to observe the commandment and instruction that Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you to love the Lord your God, to walk in all God's ways, to keep God's commandments, and to hold fast to God and to serve God with all your heart and with all your soul. The great thread that links these two readings separated by time and location and circumstances is the people's love of God, not as an option. This was not a, oh, you know, and if you get around to it, love God. This is a commandment, an element that forms the very foundation of their lives. It's that love for God upon which those who walk in this mighty, amazingly, oddly human, and amazingly divine tradition are to be grounded as they, as we, are let loose out into the world. It's the core of our being. So I have to admit, this is true confession time for, for me and maybe for the church. We haven't really been big on pushing this part of our heritage. We love um, to focus on and tend to the second part, the part about loving your neighbors and serving others, sometimes to the brink of burnout but we tend to just kind of fly right over the first part, the central part, the core. Love the Lord your God with all that you are. Heart, soul, strength, and mind. I don't, and I don't know just really what that's all about. Why do we just fly over that first one and jump into the second? Maybe it's just because it's kind of a given. Yeah, we go to church, of course we love God. We read the Bible, yeah, we love God. We pray, yeah, we love God. We like to do the seeking justice and loving kindness and walking humbly, oh, with that God that we love. We love to make music. We love to care for the earth and recycle and turn off lights and get all excited about electric cars and reducing our consumption and climate change. Let's combat racism and fight for the rights of the oppressed. Sure, we love God. Doesn't it just show in how we love our neighbor? Well, don't get me wrong, justice seeking is great, and music making is wonderful, and caring for the earth is essential. Compassion, organizing, serving, feeding, caring, all of it is amazing. But if just all of that is all we were to be about, we could do all of that at any other amazing organization in town or around the world. Both Jesus and Joshua remind us that our center of being, our core, our grounding as a community of faith is what comes before all the doing. They instruct us what is essential. Love for God in ways that are that is so evident that there's no distinction between the love and all the doing that we get wrapped up in. Jesus and Joshua remind us that the love we have for God is just what is to be let loose into the world. I recently attended a memorial service for the mother of one of our church members. It was a beautiful service. There were lots and lots of really good memories that were shared and lots of heartfelt prayers. By the time the service was over, I had a deep appreciation for this woman 
who I did not know, and, on, and all that she has come to mean for her family and friends and her church. But I started to notice that as all of the touching stories of this dear woman's life were shared, that there was a thread running through every single one of them. She loved God. Not, not in a quiet, keep it to herself kind of way, but in a sincere, centering, grounding kind of way. Her love for God was so evident as part of the core of her being that that's how those who knew her best remembered her. She apparently had listened to the words of Jesus and Joshua. It was clear that her love of God was at the core of all that she was. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and strength and mind. In other words, your whole being. So I'm going to jump on the Jesus and Joshua bandwagon and put that out there for you, for us. You all have amazing lives. You care for others and the earth around you. You know compassion and you know joy. You've overcome challenges and perhaps you're in the midst of one of those challenges right now and you're still trying to find your way through it. You love and you are loved. Yay, we can celebrate that. Now, how about adding to the center of all of that some love for the Lord your God with all that you are, with your whole being, and let that be your core. So when we were going through the process of developing the grant proposal with the Lilly Endowment Clergy Renewal Program, we were asked to include plans for the congregation during the time that I'm going to be away. So here's the reality. There's not a lot to our congregation's part of all of this. You can be relieved now. I'm not going to make you work too hard. The reality is when we got looking at the timing of all of this, it's summer and we're in Montana. Things around the church just slow down as people make their way into the beauty of creation around us, camping and hiking and boating and gardening, sleeping in because our service moves to 930 next week. So trying to do a big church thing over the summer was a little bit unrealistic. So part of our proposal was simply stated that the members would work to continue to be connected with one another and to support me and Greg with prayer, which is lovely. I love it. But I don't think it goes far enough. So I'm going to add to it. This is not in the proposal. This is, you know, from my lips to your ears. If I were going to be writing that proposal today, I'd be adding an invitation to all you all to live into that grounding commandment. Love God with all that you are. Last week, we walked around in the words of instruction that Jesus left for his disciples on the eve of his betrayal and arrest, and, and I invited us to take them on as instructions to us, to love one another as we have been loved by God. Today, we have another set of instructions. We have a call to step back into the commandments that were given at the beginning of the amazing journey of faith that has led to the ongoing formation of communities around the world. You have to remember that from those commandments, the world has been changed. Love God. Everything else flows from that. 
So what a wonderful way to begin the summer. What a powerful invitation to embrace as we move together into, into a time of renewal and restoration. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind. What if this summer we would all keep this timeless commandment, timeless commandment before us in all that we do and all that we say, in all our interactions with one another and others, with every step we take upon this great and glorious earth? What if our every hope and longing and prayer were centered in our own love for God as our center, our core, the very ground upon which we live and move and have our being? What if instead of just turning to God with our list of hopes and desires, we started our God conversations with some wonder and loving on God? Now when Joshua was through giving his instructions that day and before Joshua went on his way, he blessed the people and he sent them to return to their tents. We shouldn't do that. We should be blessed on our way and then not go and hide in our tents. We should be let loose out into the world, carrying the core of that love for God with us. So here's my blessing and my task for you. You are a blessed people of God richly gifted with compassion and wisdom. Take all that God has given you and offer it in joy for the transformation of the world. Carry with you all of God's big, hope, big hopes for you, all of God's dream for you, all of God's love for you, and Open yourselves to love God deeply with your whole being and let your love for God loose out into the world. Amen. We don't always know where that love is going to end up, and so we're going to sing a song about that. In the bulb, there is a flower. It's number 433 in the Black New Century Hymnal. I invite you to stand as you are able, and let's sing together. Yeah. 
seated as we come to a time where we share the joys and the concerns of our lives uh, with one another and with God in prayer. So as I mentioned earlier, um, the passing of Jean Misfelt, Liz Lee's mother, um, who passed away early on Friday evening. So I want to make sure that we remember those who are affected by severe weather across the country, the people of Ukraine, um, and those who are impacted by um, the shortage of infant formula on the grocery store shelves and, and how that impacts uh, families and, and the most vulnerable. Um, you may not be aware of this person, but you have been impacted by her life's work. Rosemary Radford Ruther uh, was a theologian. Uh, she passed away yesterday. Uh, Ruther was one of the cutting edge theologians that dealt with feminist theology. If you have become a accustomed to using um, inclusive language in reference to God in particular and humanity, Rosemary Radford Ruther had something to do with that. Uh, she was really on the cutting edge of a lot of that. So her contribution to um, Christianity, uh, to progressive um, theology um, is huge. And so the, the, uh, the world, the theological world mourns her, her passing yesterday. Other joys and concerns um, that you would want to share today? So Cindy is going to get us started off with singing our prayer song. We'll have a spoken prayer and the Lord's Prayer, and then we'll close with the prayer song again. our prayers for ourselves, your church, and those in need. For those who know grief, be for them a comforting balm. Be the breath of love that brings fond memories to surface. Be the voice of assurance that speaks of never-ending love. Be the touch of grace that blesses every tear and heartache. For those who face illness, disease, and injury that leads to life changes, be for them the constant reminder that your love and healing are revealed in many ways. For those who hunger, literally hunger for food and sustenance, be for them a nurturing way and a compassionate way for those who have the power to assure that food is not political or something to be earned, but is the very sustenance of life. For those who face life changes because of the actions or inactions of others, be for them a hand to lean on and strength for the journey. For those who face economic uncertainty, be for them a stronghold of endurance. For those who live in the midst of war, be for them the strong tide of peace and wash over the land. For those who walk this day in joy, be for them an amplifier through which their joy would spread and be contagious to those around them and around the world. For your church, 
in all its settings from the smallest of home meetings to the grandest of thousands, be gatherings of deep fellowship and grace. May the message of the good news of Christ empower the institutional church to be Christ's hands and feet. It is in the name of the one who teaches us to pray that we share these words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. I'd like to invite Dick and Karen and Sarah to come forward. On October 16th, 2016, Lynn began her ministry with this congregation as pastor and teacher. We now come to a time when she is given the opportunity to step away from the ongoing duties of ministry for a period of renewal. We are pleased to be able to offer her this time away and ask her to come forward in recognition of the sabbatical she is about to begin. I thank First Congregational United Church of Christ for this opportunity for Sabbath renewal and the generosity of the Lilly Endowment that opens up the way for a time to allow my heart to sing. As I step away from my responsibilities as your pastor and teacher, I carry each of you and the ongoing ministry of this church in my thoughts and prayers. Do you? The members and friends of First Congregational UCC offer your encouragement for Lynn's time of renewal, and do you release her from the duties of pastor and teacher while she fulfills her time of sabbatical? Um, yeah, your response is, we do relying on God's grace. I missed, that's me, I missed a slide in there. So. <laughs> I was wondering where that was going to come from. That was good, yeah. <laughs> Lynn, do you release the members and friends of First Congregational UCC from turning to you and depending on you as their pastor and teacher during the time of your sabbatical leave? I do, relying on God's grace. Do you offer your encouragement for the continued ministry of First Congregational UCC under the pastoral leadership of Sarah McGilvra Branham as she serves during the time of your leave? I do, relying on God's grace. We rejoice that Sarah has been called to serve as our pastor and teacher in this time of Sabbath renewal and ask that she step forward as an indication of her willingness to accept these responsibilities. I thank First Congregational United Church of Christ for this opportunity to serve as your peace pastor and teacher during Lynn's sabbatical leave. Sarah, are you willing to serve this church faithfully 
preaching and teaching the word of God, administering the sacraments, and fulfilling the pastoral office according to the faith and order of the United Church of Christ during this time of Sabbath renewal. Relying on God's grace, I am willing. Will the people of the congregation rise as you are able to affirm your covenant with the one who will serve alongside you during this time of Sabbath renewal? Do you, the members and friends of First Congregational United Church of Christ, receive Sarah McGilver Branham as your pastor and teacher during the period of Lynn's Sabbath renewal? Will you labor with her in the ministry of the gospel and give her due honor and support? Please join with me in prayer. Gracious and holy God, you call us all into the church as followers of Jesus Christ. We are grateful for Lynn's leadership and rejoice to grant her this opportunity for Sabbath renewal. Bless her in her time of adventure, rest, and renewal. Bless Sarah as she receives you in our midst. Keep her safe as she travels from place, the place she calls home to this place of hospitality and service. May, may her service among us be blessed with openness of spirit and clarity of insight. May she know your guiding spirit with the dawn of each new day. May her leadership be received and honored. May her preaching and teaching be blessed with your wisdom and grace. May the care she extends to this congregation reflect your care for all of creation. And bless this congregation as we continue to the work of ministry you have set before us. We offer our prayer in the name of Jesus, who reveals your renewing grace. Amen. Sarah, as a symbolic and literal act of transferring the pastoral duties to which I have been so blessed to fulfill, I'm going to turn my church keys over to you. They will literally let you into this building, this sacred space of worship, education, and service. They will figuratively let you into the lives of these people and the ministries that they value. As you enter these doors and walk these halls, may the mighty and compassionate Spirit of God walk with you to encourage you and give you insight and compassion. As you enter the doors of my office, may God open the way into the lives of the members and friends of this congregation and bless you with a listening heart. Your entry into the life of this congregation carries its responsibilities of leadership. May your guidance be wise and valued. May all that you do and all you are in service in the midst of this congregation be pleasing to God. So there's the keys, but there's more. But wait, there's more. Coffee. <laughs> no M&Ms. Sorry. Um, a rock. You can keep that in your pocket. 
put it on the desk, put it in your shoe. Let it be a reminder of that which grounds you in this work and a candle to light your way. Thank you. And we're done. So let's stand. Oh, you are. You're already standing. How convenient. Let's join together in singing the first four verses of our closing hymn in the midst of new dimensions. From the security of what we know to the adventure of what you will reveal. To refashion the fabric of this world until it resembles the shape of your realm. And let us go to where Jesus will lead. Let us go with the love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ and the communion of the Holy Spirit. Let us go in peace.